Hey everyone, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be showing you why this could possibly be the biggest upgrade to your business this year, as well as how to set it up and what the benefits of it actually might be. So this is the Shopify tap and chip card reader. So if you are a merchant, say you're selling at local craft shows or you have a brick and mortar shop, maybe you're going to festivals, whatever it might be, if you're selling things physically in person, you probably never really thought about using Shopify or you thought at least it was a separate entity for selling strictly online. But because they now have a card reader right here, they actually have a couple different models I'll talk about in a second, you have a pretty big advantage of using this, where everything is streamlined, which can save you money, save you time, and overall just make it more efficient for your business. So not only can you accept credit cards with this device in person with either tapping or using a chip on there, and it just connects to your phone, it's super easy with this little one here, but you can also then manage inventory, you can have a full website, people can buy online if you wanted to also do that, you could disable that if you didn't want to, but regardless, you have a lot of benefits here, more discoverability, more ways people can pay you, and if you aren't accepting credit cards in person, you're probably missing out on a massive amount of traffic. Okay, so to get started, or at the very least to learn a little bit more about this, you can go through the link in the top of the description, or you can go to sandrellmedia.com slash Shopify POS. Of course, POS stands for point of sale. And if you hit enter, you'll see that this will take you to Shopify's main landing page for how that actually how this actually works. There is a free trial. Um, you can get started with that. And I'll, I'll talk about how to do that in a second and how to set this all up because truthfully, it is very easy to do. It's very streamlined. There's a couple steps, but I'll walk you through how to do them. But if you go down, you'll see they highlight a couple of the main benefits here. One of them is that you can manage everything from any computer anywhere. It's all online. So if you have a laptop, you've got an iPad, uh, you've got different pieces people that need to manage this, you can manage access for different users, different authorizations for them as well. And so that can really set up an entire, basically the way a large business is set up, but you can start off very small just as an individual and scale indefinitely with Shopify POS. In addition, like I said, there are several POS options. This one I believe is only $49. Hey, so I'm editing this video right now and I just remembered one thing I forgot to mention when I was originally filming it. If you go through our link down below, santrellmedia.com slash Shopify, POS. Uh, you can actually get the tap and chip card reader for free. There's a little promotion going on right now. I'll show you later on in the video how to redeem that, but make sure you use that link so you can actually get a free one hopefully and save $49. But I'll show you later on in the video that even if you don't have a tap and chip reader or you don't buy one, uh, there's actually a way to accept credit card payments with your iPhone. Uh, actually two ways you could do that. I'll show you how to do those later on in the video as well. You see the device itself is very small. It's actually battery powered. You could plug it in the top with USB type C. There's a button there. It pairs with any phone by uh, Bluetooth. So I just have my iPhone right here. And once I have my store set up, I pair with that and I can accept credit cards uh, remotely, like I said, with battery power or plugged in very easily. So that makes it perfect for like craft shows or again, just in like a restaurant in your business, wherever it might be super easy to use that. And then of course, the other thing is you can also sell online and because it is all managed together, you can track inventory on either one individually or a combined inventory for both. Uh, and it'll really make it a lot easier to have a better idea. Like if you're selling in person and you have online inventory and one of them's tracked and not the other, you can end up running into problems that again, this will actually fix by, by really being streamlined and connected. You can also optionally save customer information. So if you have their account for like emails and, and maybe they want to email their receipt or they want uh, to be signed up for a newsletter or stuff like that, you can have all of that set up very easily with this as well. Uh, but with that being said, let's actually get started with this. If we click on start free trial on the top, uh, it'll bring us over to this page right here where we can create a Shopify account. But let's start off by signing up with email. And now it's going to ask us some basic questions. So we can say we are just starting. We'll say next. Uh, how do we want to sell? We definitely want to sell in person. You could also sell online. Uh, and if you can, if you don't do this initially, you can also add this later. All of this is very flexible. But let's say for now, maybe those are the only two that we want here. You see, we have quite a few different styles of products we can sell. You could sell drop shipping products, which makes no sense to do in person. You could sell services like housekeeping, consulting, things like that. You could sell digital products that could be like music, an ebook, whatever. Uh, but I think physical products are going to make the most sense. So products that I buy or make myself. Essentially, I have inventory for uh, that's going to be what we're going with right now. We'll say get started and that'll bring us to essentially our Shopify dashboards. Now, before we do anything with this, we do need to have a plan. It's going to make it easier to get the plan ahead of time and then customize the whole store. Without it, you won't be able to have a domain. You can't go to your website. Uh, you can't sell anything. You can't accept payments. So let's choose a plan right now. And there are a lot of different plans available. So if we click on settings on the bottom, we can click on plan. And from here, we are currently just on trial. Uh, so 
we can click on choose plan. Now we've got four different options here. Retail is the best for selling in person, which is the one I'm going to be going with right now. Uh, but you could look at some other options as well over on the right side. And if you click on full list of, fe list of features, you'll see that there are, let's, let's only show the differences, for example. Uh, there's gonna be some differences, the number of staff accounts available, um, the number, like the type of reports you can get, and of course, what the online credit card rates are going to be. They're pretty similar across the board, a little bit higher, 2.9 versus 2.4%. Uh, so if you're selling really high volumes, it might make sense to go with a more advanced option but i'm going to start off with the retail one right here we're going to select retail so it's going to be one dollar per month for the first three months and then after that if you select yearly billing billing you will be saving ten dollars per month so i'm going to select that and i'm going to input my credit card information so and we're going to click on subscribe now it's going to ask for our business address assuming you have a physical location if not uh, i don't know maybe if you have a registered agent or a ups box or whatever enter that information right here and then we can save the business address and that'll bring us back to the dashboard now what we want to do is start adding our products regardless of how we're selling online store or point of sale we are going to need products added in here so if we click on the products tab so let's say i'm selling some homemade organic soaps we're going to say add product and we are going to name this we're going to call this organic organic handmade soap and then we can add our description so i'm just going to copy and paste this i, I just had chat gbt make that obviously you want to write your own but in here you'll notice you can actually add some images and some links so if i have uh maybe something i mentioned like uh, each soap is how it's made handcrafted we could go and add a link there by clicking the insert link we could link to another page on this site where we maybe talk about the process in which we make them and and the story behind them stuff like that you can add links in there very easily now we're going to add some new media so we're just going to upload some photos i've got a bunch of photos right here i'm just going to add all of them uh and i don't know in no particular order actually we don't need this one so if you don't like one of them you can select it and you can delete the file we can also rearrange these so if i really want uh i mean i kind of like that one being first but if i wanted this one to be first i can click and drag that over and now that is going to be the main photo uh, for this product so like i said i kind of like this one better i'm gonna well let's leave it like that let's leave it like that for now then we can add our price we're gonna say that each one is maybe like uh 20 22 dollars 22 dollars we can have a compare at price so you could say other people might be selling this for uh 29 dollars and it'll kind of cross it out and show $22. Uh, we do want to charge tax on this, the cost per item. This is actually going to be an internal thing. It's not going to show on the page, obviously, but if it costs you, maybe let's just say it costs you $1.45 to make one, this is going to be your profit, and then your margins are right there. Now, obviously, this is not factoring in marketing or anything like that, but just generally raw materials, this is going to be a pretty convenient tool to have. Now we can track the quantity. We're going to talk more about this a little bit later, but let's just say for now we have maybe 200. We've got 200 of these and when they're out of stock, we don't want to sell them and we could have a SKU or a barcode, which is really nice. Now, when you're using the Shopify app on your phone, and I'll show you this in a minute, you can scan barcodes and this is going to be a great way if you have a lot of different products you're selling to kind of really expedite the checkout process. If you have a lot of customers, you don't want to be sitting there trying to find each individual product. Scanning a barcode could really save a lot. But let's just start off with an, a, a SKU, a stock keeping unit. We're going to call this 10,001 just to kind of start. And we could say this is a physical product and it weighs, let's say, one pound. We can have some different variations and these could be like size, color, material, styler. We can call this scent. Scent could be the one that we go with. So scent and we can have different values here. So we're just going to type them in. As we type them in, the next field automatically appears. So maybe the first one is pine. The next one could be citrus. The next one could be uh, maybe coffee. Uh, I don't know, different, uh, this one could be like mint, whatever. You've got four different four different cents right there. They're all going to be the same price. Uh, we could have, let's say, 200 available for each. Um, so we'll just kind of populate that right there, 200 for each. These are automatically updating the SKUs, and we can add barcodes over there if we wanted. Now, this is on the bottom going to be how it shows up on Google, which is really important if you're selling online uh, and you want anybody to ever find this. You want that to really be populated correctly. So that's the title right there. We can edit that and change what it is. Uh, so we're going to call this. You can add like the name of your business might be a good idea. And then this is just a little meta description copied from your entire description up at the top. And then, of course, we have the URL handle. So uh, that looks fine to me. It's a little bit longer than I would like. So maybe we just want to call it uh, organic scented soap. Could be a little easier, a little bit easier for people to remember and just generally good for uh, Google to recognize. So I'm going to leave it as that. 
And at the very top, you'll see a couple things on the right side. We could add it to categories. Um, we'll talk about, I'm going to add collections in just a second. Um, and we could choose where it's being sold. So point of sale, we could have this. Right now, we don't actually have point of sale set up. So we're going to set that up. And then we can start adding things to there. But it's good to make the products ahead of time. So I'm going to say save. And then if you want to have collections down here, of course, we just click on collections on the left side. You can make like a, a soaps collection, maybe like a fall collection, whatever. You can get the, you get the idea of how these collections would work. They're very simple, very similar to the product page. If we click on create collection, we can call this fall collection, fall collection. We'll just have some dummy text there. And then we can manually add things to this. And this could be, let's add an image here as well. Let's call this. So let's go with this image right here. Uh, and this is going to be just a general collection of, of maybe like fall products that might make sense for here. So we're going to save that. We're going to add an image. Let's just add this image right here. And the products in it right now, just handmade organic scented soap. Uh, and we can save this collection now. Now, if we go down to point of sale, we can click on point of sale and we can actually set this up now. So now that we have at least one product in there, we will be able to manage everything. So, so if you click on point of sale, this is going to be super easy to set this up. They have a nice little checklist here as well. Uh, and you can see not a ton of items to, to really do in order to have this running, but we don't yet have a point of sale reader, or at least maybe you don't. And if you don't, you can actually get one for free as long as you went through our link below, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, and you'll see that over on the right side. So if you just click on chart, shop hardware uh, you will be able to get a free tap and chip reader otherwise i think it's only about 49 dollars. so if you wanted multiple of them just 49 dollars each uh, or hopefully this free one will be enough for you so now we want to get the app i'm going to be using an iphone right here but this also works on android as well and so all you want to do is go into your app store or even more easily just open up your camera point it at your screen and tap on that right now. You can actually point it at my screen. I'll make this QR code a little bit bigger uh, and you can download the app from the app store. So now you want to make sure that you have Bluetooth enabled. You want to allow Bluetooth on this app. Basically all the pop-ups, you're going to want to say okay to essentially all of them. Now let me turn on recording on my phone and that'll take you right here. So we're going to first log in. Now you're going to log into the same Shopify account that we have on our on, on my laptop right here. I'm going to say continue and I'm going to sign in. And then we can sign in with the password. We are going to select my store. I guess I actually have not yet renamed that. We will rename that in a minute, but right now it's just called my store. So we can select the store. It is connected to this store now. And we have to allow a couple permissions here. Location services for one. I'm going to allow that. Uh, network, camera, in case you want to scan barcodes, like I said, and notifications as well. I'm going to enable all of those. And now we have to create a four to six digit pin. Now it recommends processing a test sale. I'm going to do that right now just to kind of demonstrate how this works. So if we process a test sale, a test sale, we can start off with the product. So test product, it's going to add it to your cart. Now we can see tap on one item. We will say checkout and we can choose either cash. If somebody is giving us cash, you could tap on that. You could choose the amount received and then you can say done. So just like that, that's all set up. But obviously this is not just showing you how to accept uh, cash payments. I think you've probably known how to do that for a pretty long time. Okay, so setting up point of sale, it's gonna say order hardware. I already have hardware, so we're good to go there. Then it's gonna say set up card reader. I'm gonna tap on that right now. Uh, and we do actually have to set up Shopify payments in order for this to work. So going back over to my laptop, if we click on, so it's very important that you set up Shopify payments. You need to be able to accept credit card payments before you can use the credit card reader to accept credit card payments. So we're gonna click on set up Shopify payments. We'll click on go to Shopify payments. It'll go into your settings and now we can activate Shopify payments. I'm doing business as a sole proprietor or an individual. We'll say complete setup. And then we have to submit some details about our business. I'm going to submit details. Then we can select the business industry. We can select the business category. I'm going to say retail. Then we can have our statement descriptor. It's really important that you have this set up correctly so people aren't disputing payments on their credit card. So we're going to call this Mike's Mike Soaps. And we can submit for verification. And they also recommend setting up two-factor authentication. I personally always do that anyway. Uh, so we can turn that on. There's a lot of different ways you can set that. So we can sign back in. There's a lot of ways to set this up. They recommend an Authenticator app. Uh, so if you have um, like Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, there's a lot of Authenticator apps out there. You just set up any one of those. Then you go to scan QR code and it should be set up. Then you can enter the six digit confirmation code. Then be sure to download your recovery codes in case your phone falls in a lake or something. And we'll say continue. Now back to the app. There's really three ways you can accept credit cards. One is going to be manually enter entering it. So if I just go 
from the app and I type in soap. We type in soap. You'll see it right here. I could select one of them. Uh, we could go to the cart. We could say check out for a customer and you could say manual entry for a credit card. This is going to be really slow. It's not ideal, uh, but in a pinch, it is something you could do. Additionally, you could do contactless payment with a lot of the newer iPhones out there. That's a really cool feature. And of course, this tap and chip hardware. So in order to set up the hardware, if you go over to more, we can go to settings or actually within settings, we can scroll down to set up hardware. And we can, first of all, like, like I said, you can tap to pay on iPhone. That's a really cool way to do things. But I want to go down to card reader. Tap and chip is one of them. So we'll tap, we'll choose that. We'll allow location access. And now we're going to press, now we're going to press and hold that until we see the lights on this. So you can see the lights are blinking on there. It'll say it automatically found that. We'll say connect card reader and it's currently connecting to this. And it's always really important when you're setting this up to verify the number on the back matches what you're seeing on your screen. So you're not connecting to like the wrong card reader and accidentally giving somebody else your payments. All right, so now managing this app, there's a lot more in here than you see initially. So for one, if I don't need to ship to a customer or something like that, I can tap and hold on this and just get rid of that box by removing the tile, just hit the X and we can add some other tiles. So because I only have one product on here, I think it makes a lot of sense to add the product as a quick little shortcut. So I'm gonna add that product and I'm gonna say save. Actually, let's add another thing. Let's also say we wanna have, you could add a collection down there as well. You could have a fee. So I could just say, maybe this fee is going to be a uh, bag maybe bag fee and this could be like uh maybe 25 cents maybe if you're selling if there's like a nice little bag or a gift wrapping or whatever we're going to save that so we could have a little fee there and now we're going to save so you can really customize this very uh, quite a bit but if somebody's going to come over and order something you could tap on the top and you can search for it so one of my soaps right there or what i would rather do because it is conveniently located right there i just tap on soap uh, I could choose which one it is, maybe the citrus scented one. I can add that to the cart uh, and I could also check out. So when you check out, you'll be able to accept cash payments and just mark that down. It tracks your inventory, helps you manage and calculate how much you sold and profit and everything like that. Do your books. Uh, but more importantly, if you're doing credit cards, you can accept them uh, very easily just with this. As long as it's on and it is connected, you'll be able to accept those credit card payments. Now, kind of going back to my laptop here. So that's a pretty solid summary of how to set up point of sale, but there's a couple really important things you can still do on your laptop here. One of them is actually looking into a lot of the details about things. So if we go down to finances or analytics, we can learn a lot more about uh, what was sold. You can see how many online store sessions there were. Uh, you can go to, again, finances right here, see what your total sales were, your total profit, your total margin, your earnings, your spending, and where that actually came from. Uh, between the two of these, you can really learn a lot. Of course, marketing is also going to be very powerful if you have, for example, an email newsletter, uh, or if you just have people signing up with their email, you're adding customers there. You can then notify them about either new products, new collections, maybe gift cards, promotions. There's a lot of ways to kind of recover more sales uh, and, and otherwise grow your business business basically at no extra cost to you. And then of course, if we go down to online store, we currently have a free online store tied in with the plan that we got. And this is great because people can order things online. They can view it online. If we just click on view here, we don't have to do anything. It's a very, very basic store. I, I actually, we do need to rename it. I'll do that in a minute over in the settings. Uh, but this right here, we've got one product right there. If you've got multiple, they will all show up. They can click on that. And this is your checkout page. Again, pretty straightforward, not a super like crazy looking checkout page or really the basic really the website's very basic is what I'm saying um, but regardless this is going to be enough if you're selling on social media and you just link over to your product page somebody can go through this and they can buy it it's very easy for them to do so you are able to sell online with the same plan you're using to sell in person so I'm going to close out of this if you wanted to customize it you can click on customize there's not a whole lot you're going to be doing there you could change like the background color and stuff like that. Um, but if you wanted to have a full blown uh, online store and you wanted a different plan or a different theme, a different template, you can go and browse the different plans available and you could upgrade if you wanted to. I, again, for point of sale, I don't think most people necessarily need to do that. I think this is pretty sufficient for most things. But going back to point of sale, there's a couple things here. One, we can have some different staff on here. Uh, so I currently am the only person on here. We could add somebody else who maybe is not an admin, uh, maybe instead they're an associate, or they could be they could just have limited permissions as well. Uh, and so this is going to be great for somebody who is going in. They've got their own little pin unique for when they sign in, and they could just be like your cashier or, or somebody like that. That's not able to like change your products or do anything different, but they are able to make a sale using the POS. Additionally, you could have multiple locations. 
uh, as you can see down here, I just have one right now. We can have multiple devices set up. We can have, of course, they have the hardware store. As I said, there are quite a few different uh, terminals for accepting payments. Um, of course, the little one is really the easiest one, in my opinion, for most people. I don't really think you need to get something bigger. It's probably easier just to use this one and then have like an iPad that you could get for pretty cheap somewhere. And that'll work just fine. I do have more tutorials on how to sell on Shopify. If you guys want to check those out, I'll have links down in the description below uh, to full tutorials, some full free trainings. All right, so that's my full tutorial here. I hope you found this helpful and I'm really excited to hopefully see you guys out in the wild if I'm ever like at a craft show or at a market and I run into you. Um, let me know if you saw this video. I'll be, I'll be glad to buy something and, and test out how uh, Shopify POS works for you. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Michael Bryan from Santral Media. I'll see you guys in the next video.